Okay, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm so excited to have Paul from Working In on again because we've had recent changes to immigration. And so I go through it and I'm like, I don't understand all these changes or why they're happening or what this means for people that are trying to get to New Zealand. And so I just thought I'd bring one of the experts on to talk about it as best that he can and hopefully answer some of your questions. If you are considering a move to New Zealand, start with my free course in the description. It kind of answers about 80% of your questions, and then you can figure out if New Zealand is right for you. Um, but let's dive in. Okay, thank you for, for coming, Paul. Hi, Tara. Great to see you again. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And yeah, lots, lots of things going on. <laughs> yeah, what's <laughs> going on? So if you could maybe give us a quick summary of some of the changes, if that's even possible, maybe why it's happening and kind of what people should do for their first or next step if they're in the process. Yeah, I think I think before I go into the actual changes themselves, okay. um, I think it's worth just explaining to people why these changes happen and 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 what the government's actually Ooh, trying to do in New yes. Zealand and and what this actually means so when you it comes to emigrating um every occupation that New Zealand looks at and Australia actually they use this series of codes called ANSCO each occupation has a code number oh, okay. and and they 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 drip they they grade uh, occupations by level. So level one, two, and three are what they class as high skilled, and four, five, six are low skilled. So okay. one to three high skilled, four, five, six low skilled. That's the and way. These are skills it. that they want to bring into New Zealand because why? Because they don't train for it here. Because they don't have enough people to do that. Correct. It could be it's both of those things. So one could be that uh, they don't just haven't got enough people in New Zealand. There's a shortage. That's the main reason. Uh, the other one could be on the lower skilled roles. It could be that there's just not enough New Zealanders who want to do those roles. So they need to fill those gaps as uh, well. Okay, cool. But what the government has done with this recent batch of changes that it announced last week is they've sent a very clear message to everyone around the world. Because as you probably saw, this, this news went global. I, I've not seen a change in immigration policy literally popping up in the UK and America and everything. It was in the yeah. news. and I got so quite, many emails. Yeah, it, it's quite strange because it wasn't as big as like when New Zealand closed its borders right. or anything right. like that. It was, it's just a tweak to policy. They haven't, they're not stopping people coming in. They don't, it's not like they, they don't want people coming in. So it was just a tweak, but it did, hmm. did make the news, which was interesting. But what the message they're really saying is they're going to make it harder for the low skilled people to come into the country and um, still keep multiple ways forward for the higher skilled people. There's a clear message. They want the higher skilled and, you know, they want less of the low skilled. The background behind this is New Zealand made lots of changes post COVID, massive changes to immigration policy, flipped it on its head completely, right. changed, changed the skilled migrant point system, introduced accredited employers. They, they, they did a whole massive, biggest changes we've seen in, ever forever basically and what happened was that policy worked in some ways but in some ways it didn't so last year over two hundred thousand people got visas for new zealand now that's a lot that's record numbers right two hundred thousand there's, there's that is record there's, numbers i've looked at those numbers there's only five million people in the whole country so two hundred thousand right. numbers and unfortunately when they analyzed it a lot of those people were at the lower skill level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what the government's done with these changes that it's announced is they've turned the tap off on the lower skilled level. Okay? Now it's not that you can't come in. It's just. Not that you can't come in, but they don't want. Less hundreds numbers. Of people I see. Meeting roles that Kiwis could be quite quickly and easily trained to do, you know. Oh, I see. Because, you know, New Zealand's not been immune to. You know, this is a global thing at the moment, you know, higher interest rates, et cetera, and all this kind of thing. The pressures since, again, since COVID, everyone's paying the price of COVID now, two or three years later, economically. And whilst New Zealand's in a great position economically, you know, they don't want to mess that up, basically. And all governments all around the world have tools that they can use to either change policy, tweak it, speed it up, turn it around. And they've even said as well that, you know, they've made these changes now, which we'll talk about shortly, but 
they can change them again whenever they want. Right. You know, like it's, a tap, like you said, that was a good right, example. Yeah. Turn it off. It's like an occupation, for example. You know, take for example teachers. So years ago, a few years ago, you you really couldn't get in as a primary school teacher to New Zealand. Didn't really need them. No, then, I'm in education, and they just laughed at me when I said, "Can I get in?" Good thing yeah, my and then, good. and then a few years later, and then a few years later, we're so desperate for teachers, the government mm -hmm. will pay, will, will literally pay teachers to move to New Zealand. Right, you know, so it flipped around on its head, mm -hmm. and they changed the policy to react to the current situation. So, so that's that's kind of a really good kind of backdrop as to what's happened and why it's happened. And I'll be honest, overall, when you look at the changes, it makes sense, and it's and it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the only thing that was a bit of a surprise, and I think this is kind of the reason it, it made news, was usually when the government is making a big change to immigration policy, they will announce in a in a mail out that they're going to make this change and what yes, it is. And then they'll say this change is going to be started on this date. And it's usually a month away, two months away, whatever. There's a, it's like a notice period. We're making these changes. It comes into effect a month from now. With these changes, they announced them at sort of half one in the afternoon on a Sunday, which is strange, <laughs> right? So it's on a weekend, and they implemented them from midnight immediately. Oh. Immediately. It was like, well, you know, that's it. These changes, are, here they are, and they're, they're effective now. <laughs> and it was like, oh, okay. And that caused some issues for people whose visas are obviously in process and stuff because, you know, Friday night they were all right. Monday morning they weren't. Right. You know, so that was, yeah, oh. that was a bit, yeah, yeah, it, it is what it is. It, but it was unusual to do it that way. And that's anyway, what's so different about New Zealand in general is like the government can just make changes so quickly. Like as an American coming, it was like, what do you mean? Just change, do it, change, just, you know, that's not our system. <laughs> I think overall, that's a good thing, you know. Yeah, I agree. Sort of, you're actually getting stuff done. Well, especially if you like what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. You get stuff done. You know, if you live in a, in a big country like the US and there's hundreds of millions of people, right. someone makes an announcement, and like a ripple effect, you've dropped the pebble in a pool and it will take ages for the ripples to reach oh, the edges. So true. You know? Whereas if you drop a pebble in New Zealand. Oh. <laughs> I know it's such a different experience, like with all the changes, like when we were going through COVID and she would just, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And like, it happens sure. and it's everybody's Absolutely. doing it and it's national. And you're like, Whoa, that was fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fast. Anyway. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing overall. So what they've done basically with this. So in New Zealand at the moment, you've got your green list occupations. Okay. So anyone should go green list, sort of tick that as the, Top tick, basically. Okay. If you're green, it's good. Um, it gives you straight to residence options or it gives you a two year work to residence option if your occupation's on the green list. And occupations come on and off the green list. You know, uh, so I, they add, Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, they added a whole bunch of occupations to the green list, like um, engineering technician and aviation um, engineer and stuff like this. They, they went on to the green list. They, there were some occupations that they were going to put on the green list, like fitter, welder, stuff right. like that. They didn't put those on. They held off on those for now. And it, and they, they have said these changes are for now. You know, they might put right. them on in the future. They're monitoring the market and seeing what's going on. So green list, you know, pretty much everything to say with that. The, these are the, the highest skilled roles. Um, but what they've done with the level four, five roles, you know, the lower level roles, They've introduced new criteria. One of the oh, criteria. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So one of the criteria won't affect people from the US is anybody who takes a job offer on a level four or below role now, so four, five, six, will need to do an English test. So, but places like the US, the UK, et cetera, English speak, they're exempt. They're exempt. They don't need to. So if you're from a non-English speaking country, you've got to have a basic level of English. Now, to me, that makes complete sense. <laughs> Can't believe that wasn't there already. Right? <laughs> right. So it was there for the residence visa. It wasn't there for the temporary visas. Oh. It's now there for the temporary visas. Okay. So mm -hmm. immediately that's going to 
slow some people coming into the country because previously you didn't need to do an English test to get a work visa, even if you couldn't speak English, which, really? you know, yeah, which kind of makes no sense. <laughs> so now they've introduced that. That's why I was saying these are actually a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a good move, right? They've also introduced for anyone who's not on the green list, who wants a temporary work visa. And this is probably the biggest change that does affect people. Um, if your occupation isn't on the green list, so say for example, you were a welder because that's not on the green list um, and you want to work in New Zealand and get a job off and a work visa, you've got to have either at least three years work experience already or the equivalent of a level four New Zealand qualification. So one or the other. OK, now you didn't need that previously. You could probably get in with one year's experience as a welder or, or whatever. Now you need at least three years experience or the equivalent of a level four New Zealand qualification. If you've got a qualification in welding and you're not sure what level it is, you have, have to have it assessed by the New Zealand Qualifications Authority. And they'll tell you what level it is. Right? And, le and so, like a level four from an American standpoint would just be, um, you yeah. know, the associate's degree. Exactly. It's not, it's not a massively high level, you know, no, so I mean, I know what it is. That's what I teach you. And so yeah, you, yeah, you do. It's, it's like a diploma or something like that. It's, it's not even that. And, or, or like a, a lot of trade qualifications can come correct. out we count for that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, it makes sense. You know, right. if we're going to bring in skilled people, let's make sure they're skilled. Should be skilled. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's the other criteria, the other criteria they, they brought in was, Previously, if employers, you know, employers have to prove that they're trying to hire New Zealanders, et cetera, because news, I think this is an interesting concept that people don't realise. Hmm. New Zealand immigration isn't there to issue visas. Visas is almost a byproduct of what they do. They're there to protect New Zealanders' jobs. In other words, if we're going to oh. give a visa to somebody from overseas, has every effort been made to hire a New Zealander? <laughs> so... On these lower skill level roles now, previously the employers used to have to hire, advertise the jobs for 14 days in mm. New Zealand. That was the criteria. It's now gone up to 21 days. Oh, really? Yeah. Another week. Okay. So these are all little tweaks that they've made and they're all targeting these lower skill level roles. Um, the other uh, criteria is previously, if you got a work visa, it could be issued for five years. It's now, for these lower level roles, it's only going to be issued for two years initially, and it can be extended for another year, so three oh, years in total. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they've dropped that down. Hmm. The, other, the other massive change was there were some occupations that were under what we call a sector agreement, and hmm. the main ones were bus and truck drivers. So HGV, heavy goods vehicles, truck drivers, bus drivers. They had a two year route to residence. So if you were a truck driver, you get your job offer, you work for two years, you can then lodge a residence visa. It was a work to residence route. They've mm -hmm. removed that route for truck and bus drivers. Oh. So that came into play instantly. That was the one that caused most upset, <laughs> I think, because there were there were truck drivers with job offers in place with their paperwork ready to be lodged, et cetera. And it was good on Friday and then not good on Monday. You know, but what so, does that mean though? Like they can't get residency, they can't come means, at all. Essentially, it means that they don't have a route to residence, so they can still go go over on a temporary visa. They can get a temporary visa for three years as long as they can prove three years work experience as a truck driver. So that right. criteria is previously they only needed one year; they now mm -hmm. need three. So, so it's got a little bit tighter on that. Um, there has been a bit of a a bit of a sort of kickback from the truck drivers association etc in new zealand right. saying hang on, what are you doing this this there's still massive shortages of truck drivers you know you shouldn't have done this the government said look we've looked at it we've we've we bought in three thousand truck drivers with this new policy when they had the route to residence she said that's filled a gap we'll monitor it if we if in a few months time we feel that there's there is a massive shortage of truck drivers we might switch it back on again hmm. you know so I think the overall sort of message to people is governments have tools within a framework that they can use at any point, at any time they choose to, to do this. And as we've, you and I have just discussed, New Zealand's very good at looking at things quite quickly 
and implementing right. things quite quickly. And so the the message here is to anyone who's considering moving, getting advice and guidance on what your options are is essential. It's more essential now than it's ever been. You know, you can't just assume, hey, I'm a welder, I'm going to get a job and move to New Zealand, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And the other key message is when somebody like me tells somebody, hey, yeah, this is good, you tick the boxes, you're eligible for visas. This is a window of opportunity. This is not a forever opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's so true. Look at the truck drivers. They can shut the door whenever they want. Whenever they want. You know? Right. So if you you're know, interested. You know, oh, and yeah. so they, they've overall, the changes make sense. You know, what they're saying is we'd rather New Zealanders were trained up to do the lower roles, you know, but we will bring in people from offshore. We will we'll welcome them with open arms, but they've got to meet some stricter criteria than they would have previously. And that's, to me, it's real basic stuff. You've got to prove three years experience. Well, that makes sense. You've got to be able to talk English. That makes sense too. <laughs> right, right. And, and the employers have to prove that they've advertised the role and given Kiwis the chance. That mm. makes sense. You know? Yeah, so that's good. There weren't overall drastic changes, but I think the combination of all of them together, that's what made the news, you know. And this did come on the back of Australia doing similar things. The UK doing similar things. You've got to remember Australia, New Zealand, UK, Canada, they're all kind of closely linked. They're in this sort of group of countries that talk to each other all the time mm -hmm. and sort of plan their policies around what each other's doing. You know? So do you think so like when we, one reacts, maybe you should should be like a signpost that your country might like be reacting? Yeah, okay. it's, kind of like an, it's kind of like an alarm. If one country is or oh, if a couple okay. of we're tightening up then you can yeah you need mm -hmm. to be going hang on is this going to tighten up as well you know because we're a global community nowadays right. the, everything that's happening in the world affects everybody in the world now you know yes new zealand's at the bottom of the world and it's quite cool right. so it doesn't get as affected by a lot of stuff especially the wars and all the horrible stuff but when it comes to economic changes and and you know things like inflation etc it's not immune and it has to have tools at its disposal to to use and it makes sense but the message is loud and clear we still want migrants new zealand's built on immigration always will be it's a small population that needs people from offshore yeah. there's loads of skills on the green list etc and it, and just because you're level four or five doesn't mean you can't get in it just means you've got to have it three years experience yeah, it just or a, a little bit different right no that's fair and what's key um, is find out where your level is and what your occupation is and what it allows to do because there are so so many more ways of moving to new zealand now than there were before right you know? and this is why we've partnered with you know, working in because I can't, I can't do that side for you anymore. I can't even tell you what I did does not apply anymore. And so just meeting with um, somebody there that can go through all of your visa options, if you even have visa options before you actually put any money in is a really, really good idea. Um, yeah. I'm so, I'm so taken aback by what you said about, you know, what immigration is there for, for, you know, keeping New Zealanders working. Yeah, and, and I just, I just want to comment on that as someone who's lived here for eight years. When I've been looking, I'm not in, I would not be in a green list sector. And maybe it's changed a bit now, but it um, you know, it never was when I've when I've ever looked for jobs. And man, it is hard. I kept getting that message of you know, even though I was here, like I came in under my husband's work, but like, even though, even when I was here, they were just like, well, you know, they're, they're a New Zealander. <laughs> and then like, you can't be mad about that. Like I get that. Right. Like, you know, but like, I'm also here and I'm also like way qualified for this. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, you just get like that, oh, that feeling. Of, in fact, I don't think I would have got a job unless it was a, an American that hired me <laughs> to be yeah. honest, but yeah. yeah. It, it's there. They do do these checks. They do check. And, they do. You know, I mean, it's, it's just definitely a common value, I guess you would say that it was just like, you know, I'm like, I am like running circles around you in terms of my experience, but they're going to give it to this guy over here because, you know, he, but it's also very important to New Zealand that they understand New Zealand culture. 
that they understand and it's huge. This is a bicultural country. It's and it's very it's very important in the workforce, no matter what industry that you're in. And this is why um, when people come into my community, this is what I help them with: learning that culture, learning how to function and communicate and do well in the workplace, and making friends and different community things because it's not what you think. It's not the same. Yeah. No. It's a lot and of it's so, it's so important, Tara. I, yeah. Before I was an immigration advisor in New Zealand, I worked for a New Zealand government-funded company helping people settle in New Zealand. Mm. And it was all about the culture and the fit and stuff. And we'd have employers reach out to us and say, look, you know, we've got some real issues here at work. And we're like, what do you mean? Well, we've got the South Africans here. Oh. <laughs> Filipinos here we got the, and they have their lunch break and they're in one group and they're in another group and, and we're it's true there. like even in when my work experiences I barely work with Kiwis it's it's people from all over the place and so when you're coming in everybody's coming from different expectations way of communicating it's just hilarious I mean I could tell you story after story of mm -hmm. meetings I've been in where like me and somebody are being quite frank with each other and the New Zealanders are this is very uncomfortable like <laughs> you know and we're like we're okay well I don't know what your problem is <laughs> yeah different ways but I think there's a there's a key message there as well in that yeah. that thing but when people are researching their move to New Zealand they'll do the the very obvious things well we, we need to research the housing market we need to look at rental properties we need to look at shipping right. our goods all the logistic stuff they do that research what they don't do is what you're talking about right what's the cultural side of things how does the Maori culture work? What is the Treaty of Waitangi? You know, what's my job market like in New Zealand? How, how does that work? How, who's, who, who does that employer work with? Who's their supplier? Where does the, what's their contracts they're doing? If you can deep dive into that stuff, right. you're putting your way ahead of everybody else. Way ahead. Yeah. Right. And, and you just and you're way more successful quicker because you know how to do those kinds of things. You know the right things to say. And I mean, this is what I talk to my clients all the time about what you think a teacher is, what you think a nurse is, what you think this is. It's not the same here, you know. And so, like, let me explain to you what your day will be like. And then is this something that you're interested in? You know what I mean? It's it's not going to be it's not going to be as efficient, maybe. And thorough in different areas and like just talking about that is really helpful because it's part of you know your enjoyment right <laughs> in what you're doing That's and especially business people like people think they're going to run businesses the same holy cow it's not <laughs> yeah been there been there and done that like you have I've run businesses in New Zealand and um you know look it's a great place to run a business but it, there is a learning and there's a lot of support in New Zealand if you want to run a business. There is a lot of support and it's just really great if you're going to sell sausages and wine and chocolate. <laughs> Otherwise, good luck to you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, 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 it's pretty difficult. I can It I is. Can it's difficult. <laughs> you know, I, I walk the streets dropping leaflets through doors and that all these people, yeah, we'll use you. We'll use your business. This is great. This is awesome. Oh, no. This is new. We'll do one time. One time. Me? <laughs> no it's like silent no I know you know what the worst is okay this is one thing it's like I'm I'm constantly I'm doing so many different businesses I'm doing this because I love it and that's just who I am but um I'm doing this like I'm doing something I can't remember which business it was for like a year and then one day my friends I said something I said like a direct question and they said yeah people won't ever buy that here how come you didn't tell me this? I've been doing this for a year. This would have been really good to know. Like, because I you don't really realize how much you assume. And yeah. you know, it's like, they're like, and then they don't even want to tell you. It's like, they feel bad. I don't know. <laughs> and there's a learning curve, but it is a journey and it's an adventure and people have to treat the move in that way. You know, it's, it's totally, it's not all roses and it, and it shouldn't be, and it should be difficult in right. ways, you know, anything worthwhile in life is difficult and has risk attached to it. But if you do your research and you do everything you can do and you minimize your risks, totally. then you just in such a much better position. But yeah, changes to policy, they happen, they happen all the time. Um, you know, governments tweak things and this is, these are tweaks to policy. They, they, they've not closed this you know, said, what well, we don't want these people, we don't want all of the people who could have moved can still move. Mm. It's just that they've got extra criteria around it now. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on here and talking to us about this and clarifying a lot of complicated things really well. 
Um, I so appreciate that. Me and Paul actually guys are talking about doing a, like a webinar where we can kind of overview kind of the whole process for you and then have some time for questions um, and just offering that. If that's of interest to you, can you make a comment below and just let us know just so I know that I'm not wasting my time creating something that's not useful. Um, but otherwise, go ahead and post any questions that you have and I will do the best to help you out. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, happy to talk to everybody. Okay, cool. Thank you.